Hello and welcome to this talk. It's Saturday the 7th of January. Now yesterday we gave some data from Swindon hospitals about the rate of inflammatory heart disease through uh, 2019 to 2022. Just have a quick look at that data before we uh, discuss it further because what ha what's happened here is about 12 hours after I put the video up and the video was well viewed. It uh, had about half a million views. Who knows, it might have even been seen by government officials. We, we, we don't know. But about 12 hours after the video went up, um, Sean, who sent in the original Freedom of Information request, was sent an update pointing out that this original data was in fact wrong and supplying us with the new data. So I'm going to be giving you the new data today. Here, here's the letter from Sean that we'll be looking at uh, in a minute, um, or to Sean rather, indicating the error. But anyway, briefly yesterday, we looked at these figures, which were quite alarming for the amount of um, inflammatory heart disease, pericarditis, myocarditis and total figures. Uh, but it turns out now that these are uh, wrong. These have been now been redacted uh, or taken down, whatever the word is, by the by the authority. And um, let's let's just look at the letter briefly here. Uh, good afternoon, Sean. Further to your response uh, to this request, which was provided on the 30th of November 2022, an error has been found in the figures. OK, so there's, there's an error found in the figures related to emergency department admissions for myocarditis and pericarditis. So the Freedom of Information people at the Trust are now saying they got this wrong. And they say it's what's called a formula error. We'll look at that in a minute. That occurred during the process of simplifying the data into a pivot, a summary table. Uh, the value, do, and, and then they give some, I mean, I'll just leave that on the screen. You can read it if you want to. Um, it, it just says why they think they made this error. Uh, anyway, uh, they then say, uh, I provide the correct information in an attached spreadsheet. So if you go on to here, this is all public domain. This is why I feel free to talk about it. You can actually go there and you can download the, uh, you can download the spreadsheet for yourself. So it's all readily um, available. And then the trust do uh, apologise, of course. Uh, where are we? Um, I've attached the... Uh, I, I, I've provided the correct information in the attached spreadsheet, which we've just looked at. Please accept my sincere apologies. Please be assured that this was a genuine error uh, and that we have implemented additional checking processes. OK, so that's the sort of story so far. They're saying that the data from yesterday's video turns out to be completely wrong and they supply the, uh, the now corrected data. So let's look at that uh, briefly. Here's the corrected data, Great Western Hospitals, NHS Foundation Trust. Now this is the corrected data. Now if we look at the original data, for example this number here, it's now 344, was uh, 59,340. Uh, and this number here that was, uh, well you can see the numbers are just massively, massively uh, different. Um, now, we notice a few things here. Um, basically, we notice that pericarditis, 2019, 2020, 2021, not really a lot of difference. So, for example, 74 cases in 2019, 74 cases in 2001. And up to November, uh, 60, only 67 cases in 2002. And we notice that the total numbers there are 344. But then further down, we we're actually given the uh, inpatient discharge information. So these were patients that were uh, admitted, presumably, and then discharged. And then we see that um, of the patients who were admitted and then discharged, uh, 714 of the original 344 were uh, safely discharged by the looks of this data here. Uh, now, of course, um, they could have come from somewhere else, but... 344 uh, emergency attendances, 714 actually admitted and then subsequently discharged. Um, they could have been referred from somewhere else. We don't know, but it, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense on the face of it. But we only have limited data. I did talk to Sean about the, the limited data because it would be nice, as many as you have pointed out, that would like information from, say, 2018, 17, 16, 15, all of that would be interesting. But what, what Sean said was if you ask for too much on a freedom of information request, it goes over a particular cost level and, and they probably won't do it. So you've got to like ask for little bits of data. So that's what we've got. So we see um, and we accept this, we have to accept this now as the official data, uh, very low uh, incidence of, of uh, pericarditis, myocarditis. And basically as the pandemic progressed, um, now, I haven't got the original data, but it looks like these differences here 
the differences between year on year aren't, sig aren't significant. Okay, yeah, there is some crease in myocarditis in the pandemic years. But not, not a lot. It only goes up by three, then up by f uh, um, whatever that is, five, something. Uh, five uh, and, and again there it only goes up a, it only goes up a bit so i would suspect that the the difference the, the, the difference between these numbers say uh 74 82 74 and 67 isn't significant so what what this means is uh and i'm delighted to say it looks like the people of swindon haven't suffered an excess of pericarditis or myocarditis during the uh the time of the pandemic um, which is a bit surprising. Uh, I'm delighted for them. But let's just look at some uh, data here. This is a systematic review of COVID-19 and pericarditis from a peer-reviewed journal. Look it up for yourself. Uh, COVID can cause severe respiratory illness, we know. However, may cause uh, many cases of pericarditis have also been reported. Uh, but thankfully, not in Swindon. So I'm really pleased that it hasn't been reported in Swindon. But other places, it, it has been. And this review article uh, goes on to talk about COVID-19 pericarditis affecting uh, adult patients of any age. So this is pericarditis as a complication of COVID. 60% get chest pain, 51% get fever, 51% got shortness of breath, cough, fatigue, muscle aches and diarrhoea are the symptoms of pericarditis uh, caused, by <coughs> caused by COVID, COVID pericarditis. And when they did laboratory tests, this was confirmed by an increased number of white cells indicating inflammation, neutrophils particularly, elevated uh, D-dimer, which indicates uh, thrombosis, elevated C-reactive protein, which indicates uh, inflammation, and infl in increased cardiac markers, troponin 1 and troponin 2, which indicates damage to heart cells. Also confirmed by x-rays, 31% showed chest x-rays uh, that uh, where there was an increased size uh, in the heart so this is reported and some even got what's called cardiac tamponade which is fluid around the pericardium which can constrict the heart uh, also uh, there was ecg changes electrocardiogram changes in 59 percent of cases there was st elevation sometimes there was other changes this is this is that this is this um, heart thing you know this p QRS and the uh, the T wave, that classic rhythm. There was changes to that indicative. So, for example, the, the ST elevation is kind of an elevation uh, is an elevation here, um, which indicates uh, well, the times I've seen it mostly is when there's actual damage to the heart muscle. That bit's elevated. So it indicates it indicates a heart uh, pathology for sure. Um, so that occurred. Um, and they say, the disease authors say, the prevalence of COVID-19 related cardiac disease is high, is high, and pericarditis is known as an extra pulmonary manifestation. So given that information, we're particularly pleased to see that uh, there didn't seem to be any increase in Swindon. So we are uh, delighted for the people of Swindon. Um, there's also reports here, I could do the same, this is uh, covid myocarditis so it's clear that from the data that covid can cause myocarditis and uh, even uh, covid vaccination can um, what was the term um, rarely can rarely uh, cause uh, rare occasions can cause um, uh, heart related uh, side effects uh, but these are rare so um, given that the evidence is there for um, covid pericarditis the evidence is there for covid pericarditis myocarditis uh, inflammation e e even some rare cases from vaccines we're delighted to see that through the the covid waves where there was where basically everyone got covid everyone was exposed to covid um it didn't seem to cause any increases in the people of swindon so that's excellent news so i i think what the government should do is have an investigation to see why, um, although myocarditis and pericarditis are recognised side effects, apparently uh, there was no or minimal cases in uh, in Swindon, which is is excellent news. Uh, now, um, just um, just briefly did a couple of checks on these things that they were talking about here: uh, pivot tables and pivot charts. So th these are the summary ones that were issued. So I think we can assume that they mean that this. Is there a pivot uh, pivot 
a table pivot spreadsheet and they also talked about um uh, formula uh, formula errors which normally come up as a thing like this i'm surprised they didn't see that but but there you go a mistake was clearly made and of course we all know that mistakes can be uh, can be made so it looks like rather than having extraordinarily high levels of cardiac complications throughout the covid pandemic and the subsequent vaccination campaigns the people in swindon actually had remarkably uh, low levels and um the patients that were uh, admitted uh, were actually higher than the number of patients that uh, attended the emergency department because 344 in total attended the emergency department 714 were uh, discharged so they must have come from somewhere else so we look forward to uh, an investigation and the results of why um, cardiac related complications in Swindon are are so low it's really good news uh, from the, from this data that has been now uh, corrected so um now, if we get it wrong, we'll always come back and say so. We've now got corrected data. I've now given you the, the corrected data. And as always, thank you for watching.